As we start a new year, it's timely to consider the role tourism has in our economic future. Tourism is said to be worth over 5 billion euro to the Irish economy and employs over 150,000 people, mostly in remote regions where industries will never reach. Yet the question is, how can we offer a unique experience to the world without exploiting or damaging our environment? I'm hoping to find some answers to that during my visit here to the Loop Head Peninsula in County Clare. I'm staying at Loop Head Lighthouse, which has been beautifully restored by the Landmark Trust. I wonder, will I get to see any of the 140 dolphins that the peninsula is said to be home to here on my visit? I had a surprise visit from Killian Murphy, chairman of the Loop Head Tourism Committee, to tell me more about the recent European award that the community won for sustainable tourism. He kindly brought me some delicious local food produce. Yeah, we've got some St. Tola goat's cheese. And these are both made about 35 or 40 miles up the road from us. The Eden Award aims to highlight hidden communities of the 27 member states of the EU that offer a unique tourism experience that is sensitive to the environment. So you won this Eden Award this year and that's why I'm here. Can you tell me about that? Eden was very, uh, it's very definitely uh, low volume tourism. Uh, and the key, the key to it is low volume, sustainable, responsible tourism. Um, and that's very important to you. Most of us don't live here to make a million dollars. Most of us live here because it's the most beautiful place to live. Um, and we don't want to spoil it. So while we would like to see a little bit more tourism, we don't want to see it at the cost of what we have. So is this a traditional fishing area? Definitely so. That income stream is gone. So we all have to look at how do you replace it? And many of them have turned, and myself included, have turned to the tourism sector. Were you a fisherman? Yeah, I, my dad was a fisherman. We were originally from mm. West Cork, and we came up here when I was six or seven. After a couple of years, you just kind of get to the stage where, you know, working 18, 20 hours a day, and the monetary rewards aren't coming in. We ended up going into, myself and my wife ended up going into uh, the pub trade and, and from then into the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. uh, so there still is a fishing industry here and we, we can go from the restaurant and I can buy fish every day for the restaurant. There are many other businesses here on the peninsula that have grown from guys who were fishing and decided that they, they just couldn't, the fishing couldn't sustain them. So we've got Dolph Watch, Carrie Gold, Jeff McGee, ex-fishing skipper, uh, Fish and Stay, Luke Aston, ex-fishing skipper. And they're using their skills and their knowledge of the, the waters here to provide very niche tourist products. We need to go after the people who are uh, into their geology, into their bird watching, into their walking, cycling, their low impact. Those people have a sense of the environment purely because of their interest. So they're not going to come here and trash it. They're going to come here and respect it. I took a walk down to the village of Kilbaha and up to the bridges of Ross. I'm hoping to see if I can learn anything from this community on how to create a sustainable Irish tourism industry for the 21st century. I'm meeting with John Murphy, who has 30 years experience bird watching in County Clare. So how would you rate loop heads for bird watching? Well, here in Clare, we know Loophead as the golden triangle for birds. Every year here, we have a huge amount of people come to the Bridges of Ross to watch sea birds coming as they migrate down along the coast of Ireland, heading to the west coast of Africa and South Africa for the winter. But many of the people coming here are long-term bird watchers, experienced bird watchers, coming from countries like Britain, France, Belgium, Holland, Scandinavia. Now they're not just coming for your normal regular seabirds to have breeding around the coast here like the gannet. They're coming for little snow buntings and lapland buntings breed in northern Iceland, up in Greenland and Arctic Canada. Later in the autumn, in October time, uh, when we get the tail ends of the hurricanes coming across the Atlantic, small little American warblers and thrushes end up here. Hmm. And they end up coming in, being attracted at night time, they migrate at night time, 
and they come in at night time and get attracted to the lighthouse above and they'll spend uh, a couple of weeks here fattening up, recovering and then probably head south for Africa. We've seen other birds arriving in here like glossy ibises and they're an all black type curlew type bird, slightly larger than the curlew and they've come from the Mediterranean too and we're seeing more and more of those coming every year. Okay, well that's so interesting. Those kind of species are turning up um, now in the last four or five years. And um, has there been any, you know, changes for the worse? I mean, conservation-wise? Well, some of the species, the, the, the numbers have dropped off in huge. There's been a 40% decline in a lot of the small bird populations. Um, Why do you think that is? Again, changes in, in um, climate, changes in farming practices, changes in, in the way uh, we've actually um, created problems in the habitats. We, we've wrecked a lot of habitats where these birds live. It's clear from my chat with John that we need to take better care of our habitats and environment here in Ireland. In a recent Fall to Ireland survey, 94% of tourists said that the reason they chose to holiday in Ireland was to experience our beautiful scenery, unspoilt environment and the friendliness of the Irish people. Dolphin Watch Carrica Holt is proving a big hit with nature lovers who have rated it one of the top wildlife trips in Europe. It's run by Jeff and Suzanne McGee. On the left of the gun battery, the remains of a 6th century church, <laughs> Caratown or St. Credan, who lends his name to this headland. So these are the cliffs of Kilclar, halfway between Carrick Holt and Lupin. Perfect example of the type of sedimentary rock that lies under most of County Clare. The first particular cliff face is a prime example of the climate change that occurred. 350 million years ago, you can see where the thin, muddy sheets give way to the uh, much thicker sand ridge beds halfway up the cliff. And that was because the sea level had risen about 60 metres, geologists believe. I went up to ask Jeff, a former fisherman, why he knows so much about geology. We take a lot of geologists out from all over the world from Houston, Texas, from Aberdeen, from Nigeria, to look at this, to use the peninsula here as a teaching example. I wouldn't attempt to understand as much as they do, but basically, these rocks speak for themselves. Jeff and Suzanne are very committed to the environmental education element of their work. It's about turning people onto the marine environment and uh, making a living at it. And it's an honest living. We feel good at the end of the day, usually, that. We've made people um, a little bit wiser about the marine environment. The dolphins are like an ambassador. And then you can use that to educate people or help them see the damage that we're doing, like the amount of plastics in the water. 90% of seabirds in the northeast Atlantic have some plastic in them. Jeff's experience as a fisherman is clear as he pulled up right on cue to a pod of the most amazing oh, dolphins. Another reason for the local community winning the Sustainable Tourism Award was their revival of traditional Shannon Curragh building in County Clare. How are you, Paddy? Hi, you, Tanya. Tanya, we'll do a better job and get you to see it. we get you out for a pull. Oh, cool. I'd love that. Ah. Yeah, this is one of the West Clare Curragh uh, yeah. club boats. There were nine built. So basically what it's done is we've, we've been built through the club with a leader grant and it basically brought Curragh's into all the different villages. And there's coral clubs now set up throughout the county. One of the, the key strengths, I think, for the Eden was that 
A, it pulled us all together, and B, it's made us very aware that of what we have. Um, there's a whole lot of people out there that live in places that are not quite. The last thing we would like to see here is three acres of asphalt, uh, 25 tour buses. You know, the wildlife, the bird watching here, it's just stunning. All of that just goes when, when you get a mass tourism product in here. Past experience in Ireland has shown us that tourism has often been very important to the Irish economy when we hit the ropes. I'm inspired by how this Loophead Peninsula community from Kilkee to Kilbaha are working to protect and preserve what is best about their unique landscape and environment. In our next episode of EcoEye, we'll explore biodiversity and its meanings. Why are thriving ecosystems central to a global economy? And what essential services do ecosystems provide to our everyday lives?